Slip. Uh, so my name is Mitar Fridinovic, I am from Ljubljana, from Slovenia. I hope you know where this is, uh, because we are in the EU, if you don't know that. <laughs> and we are not in Russia. Um, uh, so yeah, we are a small country below the Austria and next to the uh, Italy. Uh, yeah, and we have like a mesh network there, a big one, like around 50 nodes. Uh, but we have like one special situation, in, I think, in the sense that we have a little lot of fiber. Uh, and because we have a lot of fiber, our mesh network is quite uh, mixed. So it's not wireless only, but fiber and so on. And then we have another special situation, which is that I don't know why, but it is allowed to draw cables over the uh, streets without any paperwork. Uh, so we can also draw uh, Ethernet cables and fiber, these only with Ethernet cables, over the streets. So it's good quality link. Uh, and it works. Again, it's quite good. Um, so the city, this is also a solution. Uh, maybe ask also in your communities how is this in the cities. Uh, but we asked, they said that oh, we just have to the municipality, we just have to check if you can use existing um, cable which holds under lights and so on, or if there is too many cables already on it, then you have to put your own cable for holding the internet cable. And, and that's it. So they just check if can you so in some good situations so there is not many cables you can already use all these cables for the um, uh, for the lights and so on. So it is quite easy to spread Ethernet cable or fiber or so on. Um, and because of that, we we uh, had some problems with routing because uh, current routing protocols and more specifically matrix used by them uh, somehow doesn't really work very well in such a situation because we would like to reuse all this fiber, uh, not that they would all wireless if uh, fiber is available. Um, uh, so we are currently using OLSR. Uh, we are checking a little bit other uh, property protocols. This is why also we are here to see which is the best one and big data. Uh, and one thing I think at least Babel and, and OSR have common is that they are using um, the same uh, metric for calculating uh, the the um, how the package should root. So I don't know how, what Batman uses also the or not something else special of course. <laughs> okay, so the problem with uh, wait, uh, so we, uh, they're using uh, the X metric, uh, which is expecting transmission count metric, which means uh, that how many times it is ex uh, in average expected that packet uh, will have to be transmitted. So you have like three hops, this means at least three times. Uh, but if there is some packet loss, it means that this packet have to be um, transmitted sometimes. It's the transmission count for a long trip. Uh, yeah, it is in the sense of that x, it is uh, two way, yeah. It is so it counts uh, two way, yeah. Um, so it was done in 2003, so it's quite old. Uh, and in fact, what it's doing is it's minimizing the transmission count. So if you want to minimize how much time you want, uh, how much transmission you want. Uh, what's wrong with this is that it doesn't have any information about the different kinds of media. So if you have satellite cables which you want to use because you have them, or fiber if you want to use because you have them, and wireless you have to use, the, it sees all these kinds the same. Uh, and, and, and uses only packet loss as a measure, which is most of the time true that the packet loss on the wireless is higher than the fiber, and so it uses fiber, but if you have multiple hops, uh, then it can prefer fiber, uh, wireless, uh, which is at least in our situation, not, uh, so uh, we don't like that very much. Um, so what you, what you want? So okay, uh, sorry. So this all talk is discussion. Okay, so if you have any uh, 
reconciliation and the ideas and if you don't agree with something that I thought, please raise your hand and stand me so. This is somehow like my experience I'm trying to tell you and my uh, motivation why I'm trying to um, change or what I what I am thinking about in the in the sense of metrics. So for for me what what I want what I want from rooting and what I want from metric is that I want low latency. So, so latency minimization minimization and that I want that the probability of uh, packet getting to the destination is the, the best possible. Okay? So those two things uh, is the thing of what we are doing with the security protocols I believe. Uh, and, and so this is like motivation what we want. Uh, so in general, like hope counting is the uh, thing which in fact mostly influences on latency. So somehow it's the latency. If you have multiple hopes, it means that every hope because of buffers and everything adds some latency. Uh, so hopes mostly uh, deal only with latency. Uh, so it is this in fact both. Uh, it is uh, so latency because every transmission takes some time because on the values it's quite noticeable and especially the transmission because you have to uh, get information that 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 uh, packet is lost and you have to uh, some have some time out and so on so it takes longer time for the packet to get through. <coughs> but what happens when you've got a very reliable Ethernet versus an unreliable wireless LAN? Presumably, you want to take multiple hops will be a fixed one, a fixed Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, sorry, uh, those are two things you want to, at the same time, to make uh, to uh, make better. I think, I'm saying, of course, I'm saying why, uh, so this is what you want. You want low latency and high probability of packet get through, okay? And now I'm saying what current uh, metrics or routing protocols are doing. So, hop counting only decreases latency. So if uh, actually it doesn't, because it uh, it's, it takes the longest link possible, and then if you send unicast traffic, you have to resend the package very often, and then the latency goes up actually. So no, it, it takes the shortest. Short. Yes, it <coughs> takes the the, mini yeah, hops, the minimum is, amount of hops. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it stretches the length. Of yeah, the okay. So okay, so this this means okay. okay. No, no, no. But what it influences? Okay, hope counting influences only latency. Doesn't influence the probability. Not even that. Okay, I agree. Okay, so yeah, I agree. So I try to find something good for all the Okay, so I'm trying to say it is. I said because it will decrease. Yeah. I will summarize it like that. What you are saying is most definitely true if you are in the wire. wire yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, there is no doubt. Now, what Electra is alluding to is the fact that when you are Using the 802.11 Mac, there are real interactions that happen between what you are doing at layer 3 and what the overly complex 802.11 Mac yeah. is doing to you. Mm. And what ETX is designed to do is to do something reasonable in the presence of a completely unreasonable Mac overly. Yeah. So what ends up is that if you do anything intuitive at layer 3, the 802.11 Mac shoots you. Okay. And you have to do something that is as counterintuitive as ETX in order to get decent latency, and you're absolutely right about that, out of the 802.11. So what you're saying is quite true in general, and there is just one particular case in which it's completely wrong, Sorry. and that's the case of 802.11. Okay. Hey. Sorry, but that's just not right. <laughs> <laughs> Built, they work perfectly. Then you will have some area where you are, where, where you have links. Yes, they might work. Sometimes they have bit error rates. High bit error rates. They might have loss because of this. It doesn't really uh, matter what Mac you're using. It's just a matter of the signal to noise ratio, the physical signal doesn't get through. And then at some point you don't have a link at all. And when you take each link, you will be able to measure just as well. Uh, just existing or non-existing, then you instantly optimize for the worst links toward the target. 
in terms of uh, packet loss, in terms of signing to noise ratio. You could, of course, say, okay, I'm just throwing the bad ones away, but you would, think, would still optimize for the worst link you consider good. And this is not an effect on the, on the, wire, on the wireless LAN problem. It's, uh, it's you can get the same effect on any point-to-point -point radio transmission technology. As soon as you are working with electromagnetic waves, you will have some area where you have this weak links. And these weak links doesn't work well with popcorn metric. Popcorn metric is for a world with a good links and no links. non-existing yeah. links. Yeah. And then popcorn metric works well. As soon as you have links that are long, that help you to reach far away points in the topology, but are a little bit less good, then you are in the problem. In a, in a wireless... If you have a simple Mac underneath, pop count would minimize latency. It would maximize loss, but it would still minimize latency. The extra latency that the lecture was alluding to is added by the re-emissions of 802.11. The claim of Etern was not at all that pop count is a good choice. This claim was that pop count attempts, perhaps misguidedly, to minimize latency. Mm -hmm. anyway, anyway, anyway. It minimizes throughput and maximizes packet loss. Can we all agree to that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was once called on the idea of mining this the worst link first metric. Worst link first. <laughs> I think it's pretty well a pretty well description of how confident why doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah okay, so one thing I think that it can influence the latency, but everything else not. Yeah. And it's especially why why. Uh, so, we still have this in mind, but we want, we have, want to increase, uh, decrease latency and increase probability of packet through, and I think ATX is doing on both of those sides something. Okay, so on the latency, it, uh, because every transmission takes some time, it, uh, if you um, uh, choose paths which has the less uh, expected transmission count, you uh, decrease latency. I believe we can agree with that. Um, ETX tries to find the best compromise between uh, number of hops and the likelihood that you get the packages through. Yeah. That's what it does. Yeah, but if you <coughs> have multiple transmissions, then the latency increases. Yes. Okay, so if you try to minimize number of transmissions, the latency decreases. Okay? But in the real world, you have a radio layer. If the package doesn't get through, you retransmit, you wait for acknowledgement, and then the latency actually goes up. But we just mentioned that before. That's exactly what ETH is measuring. High ETH means it takes a longer time to cover yes. this link. So directly you could say the link with a good ETH metric has, and the assumption that someone is repeating information on each link to get through, good ETH means you have low latency because I have a low number of hops or just a low number of necessary regions which will finally get the data through. Yeah. Okay. And for probability, uh, because less transmissions means also uh, that less chance that something doesn't get through. Okay? So it, it also increases the probability that packet will get through. Okay? Do you agree with that also? So that the ETX also increases in especially especially in comparison with hop counting, increases the probability that packet will get through. Uh, so in wireless networks, in practice, we know that it works quite nicely because it improved, especially in comparison with top counting. Uh, uh, it minimizes our air time. Is this true? Well, it tries to. Yeah. Um, it minimizes air time if you have only a single data rate you can send. As soon as you have multi data rates, then it doesn't minimize air time anymore. But quite like it takes the longest physical distance, which is the longest current rate, it takes the most time. Okay. Um, so yeah, so but 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 what I don't uh, why I, I don't believe that why it minimizes is because it also doesn't have uh, what it doesn't count in is that you maybe have cables. So in cables you don't have any airtime, so it doesn't it, 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 it sounds like in there is airtime. It, it doesn't take into account that there is a diversity or multi-channel. So again, 
uh, it thinks that everything is on the same channel and again it doesn't minimize that you can send at the same time uh, and uh, it doesn't uh, uh, decreases uh, oh, it, it doesn't a bit <coughs> because of inequality measurements uh, how the other nodes influence decisions so if you, if you have uh, two nodes which are deciding for their packages they are deciding independently they, they don't take into account how will other nodes decide. So they can all choose one best hope and food it completely you know, and not distribute this over uh, different nodes and be better off. You know? So they are like everything just thinks for themselves uh, and try to uh, win from themselves, not for the whole mesh. So it is like in game, game theory, uh, they are not cooperative, but they are just want to win as fast as possible and this can get that one node gets fluid because for everybody it, it seems that it is the best but it, uh, <laughs> not if everyone involves. So uh, and because this because it, it can fluid some one node you again get retransmissions and so on and, and, and more airtime and so on. But in that case the link quality of, of the bottleneck that you're referring to it will get worse. Yeah, but then you have flopping. And then it's all, all the time choosing the. That's another yeah. thing. Then you have the problem of oscillating, so that yeah, uh, it switches from exactly. One to the other. And, and, and this is this is in in okay. So my experience, uh, why, why, why my background is from artificial artificial intelligence, and this is some if, if you have model of some behavior, and this is exactly what sh is um, uh, example of decision making which is short sighted. Okay, because with Intelligence, you would see that that you are flopping, and that maybe then you have one side decide some, something else than the other side, but that both sides are deciding both well, sides. Yeah, 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 if, you, if you have an, a means of preventing that um, at one point all the nodes select one bottleneck, yeah. and then they all run away from that bottleneck and create another bottleneck. If you mitigate it so they, they evenly distribute their traffic, then it's fine. You just course, have to, yeah. we have to prevent some kind of oscillation. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But but oscillation means that it is short sighted, that it doesn't see that it is good to not flood everybody else because yeah, but if you prevent the oscillation then it will automatically balance as good or mm -hmm. close close to as good as you can balance it. But this is then trying to find special cases and solve my special cases by one by one. Because oscillation is one one thing, what if it oscillates over three hops, but it oscillates over four hops. You know, it is like uh, it can be uh, uh, it's, it can be uh, like uh, bad, uh, worse. You know, it, 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 what you have four nodes and it goes circles around it. So. Sorry, but I, I will be beaten afterwards. I know. <laughs> but now what I'm about to say, I'm going to be beaten afterwards. Okay. The the problem is um, you use OLSR with the ETX matrix, um, and you have to update. The, the table of the metrics of all the nodes. And uh, once your network is congested, the metrics change, but at the same time, you also have problems in synchronizing the database. Sure. Yeah. So then you will have other interesting effects. Yeah, okay. Just I to put that there. Okay. Uh, any of you have One interesting fact about this is that this oscillation problem has been discussed and has been a problem even before wireless. Uh, Com yeah. Communication was available to air to uh, to I will, I will get back cheaply. Yeah, I will get back to why how uh, about these inflation effects? Why it is happening in this? From right. my point of view, uh, later on. It's it's happening in so many places these days. Everybody has a GPS navigation in the car, and then there's a congestion somewhere, and then all the navigation software yeah. Yeah. reroutes the exactly. whole traffic to a little yeah. front, and then everybody is in the traffic jam. So what what I'm missing all this uh, model which uses the ATX uh, is that it's quite simplified and not extensible. <coughs> it's really hard to explain <coughs> this metric with bandwidth information and every, everything all the information we may, might have about links we have like it is fiber, it is um, uh, and so on. So it is not uh, easily yeah? You use that point? Okay. Uh, so it's not so nicely extensible that it be the metric itself Find in, in multiple. <coughs> um, 
So when we want to minimize airtime, in the sense, because we want to minimize airtime, because this means uh, uh, less latency, because it takes to transmit, uh, and it means also less chance to uh, have problems. Uh, and it is important to do that when it detects somebody. In the sense, if you have fiber and, and, and Ethernet, it doesn't mean it doesn't matter to uh, have uh, to use that uh, channel. Uh, the one thing I think we uh, the metric doesn't count is that we have different channels. One a half duplex and other a full duplex. We wireless Wi-Fi is most of the time uh, half duplex because we use the same channel for uh, the same frequency for both the ways. Uh, and fiber and Ethernet cables are today. Mostly uh, full duplex, or you have two fibers in each direction, and so on. Uh, and this is again something because when you have two fibers, you can transmit in in one direction, and and uh, so if you have full duplex, and you don't uh, need to think about what his daughter is doing, and if you have a half duplex, you have to think that when I'm transmitting, someone else cannot transmit. Uh, so and this is also what happens in. Yes, we have multiple channels again. Maybe you have multiple channels, and with multiple channels, you can uh, have full duplex transmissions or um, different things. Uh, so, again, what we are trying to do, and I'm trying to do, is or to discuss what, how to do that with you is latency minimization and successful transmission probability maximization. So, maximum probability of sending and minimal uh, latency. Uh, so what I see this is from my experience is that this is simple application <coughs> problem. So you have some previous performance data, some previous data samples you collected or from the previous uh, um, working with the mesh, and you want to predict future in the sense that you want to predict some smart decision, which will say, okay, from previous data I'm saying I'm forecasting that the best way to send data is over some link for you, for that destination. Uh, so this is the general artificial intelligence or uh, machine learning problem. Uh, which is problem we now send because we have small computers, we don't have supercomputers. Uh, so we have to take some shortcuts. Uh, and one of those shortcuts which are used is the that we are using mostly algorithm, which is called short as path, to calculate this decision. And, and for only for this it is great. If you count hopes, this is exactly what you need. So if you want to decrease number of hopes, it is uh, it is um, in the hope counting. The shortest path is the uh, great because more hopes you have in wild networks, mostly, yeah, uh, the higher latency you have. Uh, but from the point of decision making. The shortest path has few problems. This is the same name for all of them, so it is local. It doesn't know what it doesn't take into account how will somebody else this decide. So in GPS exactly this. <laughs> I decide for a new route and that I don't think about how somebody else will decide for the same route, which is probably not a good idea. So so shortest path map is local, it just thinks about <coughs> itself. So it's, it's blind. It doesn't see any cans, or it's greedy. You can say it takes the first best of possibility without thinking about combination of other possibilities, which would make them worse. So, in a sense, uh, in ungreedy search, uh, ungreedy search of solution would be that uh, it, it finds a how. Okay, maybe I can take suboptimal uh, solution, but because for me it's suboptimal, but because we have we have multiple agents or multiple. A package for this meeting in general, this will be optimal for the whole network. Currently, you are all, always just looking for a site. So, what is my shortest path to the solution? Which is in diverse networks and the big networks problem. So, this is a quite problem with non problems of shortest path, and this is, because, this is the reason why you know, artificial, you know, artificial intelligence does it, they don't use it most, most of the time. Uh, you, you maybe know these problems from the um, bad programmed uh, artificial intelligence in games where you have like a strategy game and uh, your unit gets stuck into some tree and it can, cannot move anywhere else because it wants to go to that direction and it's the shortest path to that direction and it is stuck there. Okay? 
<coughs> that, that taking into account that maybe some other unit is also doing the same thing in the other stack or something. Uh, so this is that, why is the problem? It is really, uh, and we have the same here, problem here. Um, so the question is how to integrate knowledge of decisions of others. So we have some decisions of others. We know that they are doing. We have some. We can assume that they are doing it the same way we are doing it. Okay. Uh, even harder would be if we, we, if we wouldn't have this information, but we can assume that others have the same thing for the course and probably the same metric. Hopefully, it is not in the worst meshes in, in number of versions uh, of clients. Uh, it is probably not true, but at least some approximation could be done here. So we can have a lot of information from others. Especially in in uh, Polestar, where you have the whole information about all the whole network uh, and not just about neighbors. Uh, so yeah, so what I am thinking about in the sense when I'm trying not to solve this problem with uh, like decision making problem is that we have to make some probability model. Uh, so the ADX have some probability model which uh, is counting uh, is using uh, inequality. So how um, What's the probability of packet getting through? Uh, but as I said, it doesn't. Take, uh, as already said, it doesn't take into account the problem of um, um, of different media, so that this is different, and the probability of sending is different. If I have a full duplex link with, of me sending there, and he doesn't, and, and the other guy that doesn't send me uh, back on the, on the same link is. Uh, zero because he sends over the other link and half duplex it is not zero because he can send on the same channel at the same time. Uh, so yeah, so we have two things now. And my idea is that we concentrate so yeah, so <coughs> why I talked about latency and that one hope in the wired um, routing protocols was meant to decrease latency was that because we as uh, communities uh, choose shortest path, which is good for short, uh, solving uh, one uh, hop count routing problems, and we just ch ch change this with ETX. What we in fact did was that we concentrated mostly on the this step uh, that we get to the solution from the point of of latency, so decreasing latency. Okay, we get to something we have. Uh, what I am suggesting is that we maybe should go from the that you want to maximize probability of getting back through and a little bit maybe forget about latency. You know? So the latency maybe is not so important for wireless that we want to especially to back against them uh, in the first place. Um, so yeah, so that instead of latency, let's ask maybe in theory, mentally, in, for the discussion, for the um, development of the metric, let's start starting on the probability. Set. So, how to increase probability of getting back is that? Um, so, what we want, um, this is what I said as my goal, is uh, make the probability that transmission will be successful the first time highest. Not that it will be in three times the best, but the first time that's highest. Okay? It is, of course, combined. So, if it's first time and you repeat, probably it will be also the second time and so on. Um, so yeah, so and if we concentrate on the probability of this, we can just do it like a probability calculus and say, okay, what's how we calculate what's the probability of packet getting through? <coughs> and because we can, uh, because this calculus can get as complicated as we want, in the sense that you can integrate different um, complication of models, so we can integrate with, 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 integrate. Uh, type of links and so on, it is maybe easier to extend it to different kinds of links, to different um, uh, kinds of um, uh, measurements we can do and so on. Uh, so I decided that we, uh, because we want to, to, to just change metrics, not the whole routing protocol, uh, and so we have to stuck with the short best path algorithm, uh, we cannot detect too much about, okay, we can do a little bit, but not like global. Uh, that we cannot do much about the global impact of, uh, of other nodes making decisions. Okay. Uh, as I said before, uh, 
uh, shortest path by its design is local, so it, it's hard to make it uh, use the whole uh, the global state or something. Uh, uh, that's why uh, this it will not be so um, important, or I will not so be solving this problem. But I will be solving what for us is important uh, is that we have mixed networks and that we have maybe multiple channels and multiple links to different channels. Um, uh, yeah, because it is probability, uh, we can uh, again um, uh, calculate on multiple hops probability of making it through by simply multiplying the probability of one hop. You know? So if you have if you want to divert from one A to B and from B to C, it is probability of getting to them is multiplication of uh, is product of uh, probability of each hop. And because we want to satisfy some mathematical um, requirements for Babel and so on, uh, we do a logarithm so that we can like, sum all this. Uh, so it is the same. Yeah? True? You don't need to. You are not. Uh, what you are saying is that you want your metric to be an additive algebra. So yeah. So sort of combined by adding that. Yeah, because we are going through short as well. That's the requirement. But using the logarithm is a good way of mapping the multiplication. Uh, but it's not a requirement, I, I thought that it is because for your for bed or not. It's the simplest way of solving it, yes. Mm -hmm. Like that, yes, but it's not strictly. Yeah, yeah, okay. So, yeah, because we are doing, using short span, you have to have a summation of multiplication. So, we can uh, just do the rhythm of the value and the sum. And just if I may, yeah, yeah, sure. I mean, if memory is right, what you are suggesting, the um, the naive uh, packet loss method, which is true in the absence of link layer A or Q. Uh, if Jethro uh, is correct, I believe that that is what Batman Mark III used to do. I don't know about any later versions of Batman, because we don't know what they do, but that is the quote Batman would do in your Oh, I'm not sure if I understood you right, it's multiplied. The one that was documented in an internet chart? Ah, yeah, uh, yeah. documentation. <laughs> 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 so, what are we back at in some version? It's a, it's, at the moment, we, we multiply the transmission quality. Instead. You know, ETX is doing round trip, but we, we can do asymmetric routing. Exactly. We'll do yeah. asymmetric routing mm -hmm. if we have a good path to one destination. Exactly, yeah. And you multiply yeah. the quality. So, what I'm doing now is also doing some one, one way transmission, yeah. I, uh, ETX is doing, is helping for a round trip. I, uh, somewhere in the middle of this uh, thought, I <coughs> just started doing one direction because uh, uh, I assume that uh, the, for that direction the building protocol is solved also. Yeah. <laughs> it's not only the transmit direction, it's also taking account that we have to receive acknowledgements from the other side. Already so for the, already for for calculating the inequality, you already receive bond. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. So you know, already in measurements, you already in fact have included uh, both acknowledgements, so you don't need to have it twice. In the, yeah. So I'm doing the same thing here. So the point is that the, the simple thing is just uh, inequality is the so the this S is for successful transmission, so the successful transmission is linked to the That's the probability of my package rating there is how much I, in previous, uh, in, 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 so this is future, probability of future, and how what this is probability of uh, past. So I have, I, I measure that in the past, 80% of package get through, so probability of me, the future sending package is again 80% in some uh, basic model. Um, uh, yeah, but this doesn't count in this, uh, uh, into the second factor. Yeah, so now what I'm trying to do, this is quite nice if you have only one link, but then you have some other uh, routers around, and you have like um, fiber. Uh, and because of that, uh, my, my idea is that you start um, uh, to adapt this link quality with information about who is around you. So if I'm or, or 
who is the guy I'm sending to you. So if, if, does he have uh, problems if I'm sending uh, something to him or not? Okay. So if it's half duplex and I'm sending to him, he has problems because he, he cannot send anything at the time. If it is full duplex, he can send something. Um, so what I talked about is that I should extend um, equality with the uh, and, and divide it by the number of neighbors. So that means that uh, uh, neighbors who I uh, so I, I don't know if I have like uh, only one neighbor, uh, then I when I'm transmitting I I uh, am giving his transmission. Uh, so then I divide by uh, y. Uh, if I have two neighbors, I give two transmissions and so on. Uh, the point is that maybe the better is the number of neighbors who could send at the same time. So this means if this it is hard duplex, uh, I'm con I'm controlling those which are hard duplex for them. Okay, not full duplex. What about the neighbors that you don't see? Uh, yeah, this is of course a approximation again. Yeah, uh, about the neighbors I don't see, uh, I don't care about because if I couldn't get any packets from there, they probably don't influence me. Yes, they do. They do. Yeah. What? They do. Exactly. Why? Why? It's the classical hidden node problem, basically. So there are neighbors that send something to the same destination that yes, you want okay. to send to, yeah, 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 yeah. and that yeah. will. But, but, True. Uh, what I did, what, what here is to use only, name, only information about uh, one hop away, because this is what most routing protocols have. Okay, they don't have name of information about two hops. What they do? Like I think maybe uh, that was. Uh, I seem to recall that that was the uh, inter components. There is a uh, technical report from 2005. The NIC metric has two components, which they call the inter, the inter, and the inter component. And what you're describing here is six steps to the inter component of the NIC metric. Okay, but I don't know if so doesn't help me now much. <laughs> if you can explain a little bit more about that, but. Well, it's basically this idea, except that it doesn't necessarily want to divide, you know, that's very rapid, that's very strong. It's, uh, uh, I will fix it. Uh, <laughs> later, Clear it's number of neighbors who something. Yeah, I will mean, I mean, improve. I mean, this is a working version. Okay, maybe you, you finish first and then we discuss yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so this, this is how I. This is uh, my line of thought, so that you understand how I think. So, uh, so I said, okay, so it's not about every neighbor, but just those neighbors who I might um, uh, interfere with when I'm sending. So they cannot send it when I'm sending, okay? So that's the uh, yeah. answer. Uh, so the idea is that who could send at the same time uh, is maybe better than say probability of neighbors sending at the same time. So that you, you don't just count them. I have five neighbors, and but how? What, what is the probability of send them sending at the same time as me? Okay. So you increase you don't because in the previous instance you you were saying okay I have a neighbor and this means that he will send. That's not true. I have a neighbor and maybe he he won't send. So the idea is that you extend this to the probability of neighbors sending at the same time. So the fact you get uh, below, uh, you have some <laughs> of and ah, yeah, the next question is how do you measure the probability of them sending to you? And I said maybe I can just misuse uh, invert inequality. So this is the quality of the percent of packages coming successfully from them as a measure of how much they can uh, send me in, 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 in average. Uh, and I sum over all neighbors, uh, and of course, over all half, not two plus neighbors, not two, as we said before, not about everyone. Uh, so, yeah, so this is the final uh, proposal I have. I have it tested. This is poor speculation, full line of thought. Uh, I don't know if it works and if it doesn't work. But the point is, what I suggest is that we take the link quality, so how much package I can uh, get through, and we divide by the sum of inverse link qualities of uh, more neighbors. The reason why we want sum, as I said before, uh, sum of over other is because those are those which I could interfere with. If we have full of things, I don't interfere with them, so they don't count. 
and the inverse of work is like an approximation of uh, how much they uh, are sending to me uh, successfully. Uh, and then I think it is a uh, solution in the sense that it behaves, seems to behave in theory, uh, like I want. So if there is zero neighbors around, I get probability of inequality. So how much effect do we get? They have multiple link, uh, multiple, if I have full, full duplex connections, so if I have fiber, it is again just inequality. So in the sense of fiber with 100% packet, uh, zero packet loss and 100% packet throughput. Uh, I would have here one, and this uh, for that hope I wouldn't get any penalty. Uh, this is again what I want because in ethics I get penalty for fiber. Okay. And, hmm? What do you mean if don't get any penalty? When you don't have half duplex neighbors, the, the, uh, below the division, this part seems to be zero. Dividing by zero seems to be zero. Yeah maybe, yeah, yeah, maybe there are some mistakes here. Uh, good, good catch, sorry, yeah. Um, um, you need to one plus. One plus, this is the yeah. basic solution, but okay, okay. What if you have negative one neighbor? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, so, so yeah. Hmm? Yeah, I agree, yeah, that's a mistake uh, we have to fix yet, so. Um, uh, so yeah, so the idea is okay, that's true. So the deal is when there is no neighbors, or it should be the same as inequality, <coughs> and when there is uh, uh, only half, uh, half of full of those neighbors, again, the same as inequality, and when there are um, neighbors which are half duplex, and uh, you uh, approximate their probability of sending by uh, inverse inequality. Um, so what, uh, I'm not sure, sure if one plus solves the problem, but uh, could be somewhere there. Yeah. Uh, okay, so this is the discussion. So uh, my name, Bob Redmayne, and the discussion, but I will put it back uh, to have it seen, seen and, and maybe discussed on this. So I hope you understand what's my motivation. So this motivation is big networks. My motivation is that I want uh, that uh, hopes doesn't uh, over fiber doesn't count much or nothing. Uh, ah, and yeah, what's interesting here is also for the disprobability, but I'm here to be extended with other um, uh, clauses in the sense that you can also say how probability if, if if I know how how how, how much bandwidth I'm using and how much bandwidth this is. is uh, uh, Available, I can also add another clause which adds probability uh, or makes it smaller probability because uh, the bandwidth is fulfilled or something. Okay? Uh, and so on. So you, you could, we can, because we are concentrating just on probability, we can extend it like, uh, I don't know what's the English term, uh, conditional probability. Yeah. So we, we can just add new conditions to the uh, final probability we know about. Uh, okay. Who will start shooting me? <laughs> Any? Do you want to say something? Similar to you, it uh, reminds me very much to a part of this MIC metric. They um, took a new token, I'm not going to talk about probabilities, so they're using a multiplication metric. They try to approach the same thing from an additive metric, so using causes. And one thing they did was they just said, okay, if I have a cost for a link, and multiply it with the number of one more neighbors of this link, because all of them have to be quiet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you extended this concept by saying, okay, if, the, if I don't hear this guy that good, then maybe I don't need to be quiet or yeah. always. This is pretty similar to this from the probability point of view. Yeah. Maybe the people uh, responding should come forward. Uh, that's probably better, better for the streaming. So if somebody's talking from the background, it's probably not good for... Do we have streaming again? Yeah. Yeah. Still streaming. yeah, we have streaming again. Everything so is recorded. Let me propose to come forward. <laughs> ah, okay. You really want to discuss the detail? Yeah, why not? Yeah. yeah. To come back to what you were saying at the very beginning, when you were speaking about the difference between wireless and water, 
Really, one way it's always two ways because the other end has to acknowledge on the Wi Fi layer yeah. that the packet is coming back. So, you always need to take into account the reply of the other one because each packet needs to be act, otherwise, the Wi Fi driver will try at different rates and will yeah. send again. And that's, for example, that's missing in, uh, in your equation. You need, you need the uh, link quality from the other side and you need to calculate that into your probability. If the other side has 100% packet loss, for example, towards you, you will also not get a packet through because each packet okay, is yeah, yeah. acknowledged. But we, but we can, but we cannot measure. We cannot measure this independently, or we can it. We can what? We cannot measure this independently because if you always you send there, you have to get. Acknowledged. That's what I'm saying. You yeah, need, you need to calculate this into your probability. The probability of the other end sending the acknowledge to you needs to go into your uh, equation. Yeah, but, but isn't this... No, because what I'm saying is that inequality is in fact multiplication of two probabilities of sending me there and getting back back. When I'm measuring this, when I'm measuring how many package I get in the last... But wouldn't you need in your equation also to calculate the half duplex neighbors from the other end? Yeah. So, and how do you get? I mean, then this is more than just the other incentive too. It's also the half duplex neighbors of you know that influence the egg packet that's coming back. You need this from both ends. Yeah, but what I'm thinking is it both ends go and the code already contains. You're assuming that the link quality metric that you have on top of your yeah of your calculation it's already includes uh, it's probability of, of probability yeah. in both directions yeah. and probably uh, assuming that one direction is stronger than the other or more important. Um, well, I'm completely with you that you say we have to treat uh, wired links and wireless links differently. Um, is it calculating or detecting a number of neighbors and making some conclusions? It's an interesting idea. I'm, I'm not so sure if I'm, I'm, I'm worried about the hidden nodes. I'm worried about I'm worried about the hidden nodes. 
because you might have hidden nodes. Yeah. You might have um, one link and you only you see maybe no neighbors, but that one has five neighbors on the other side that you don't see, and you will value that one higher yeah. based on your calculation um, compared to another link that yeah. maybe has more neighbors, but. So yeah, that's the question how much information I, 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 I have available. So here I said I have only link qualities and neighbor topology, one hop name. Okay. Mm -hmm. If I, I have more, of course I can do even more and more. If I global, like if I have global information, I can do crazy stuff. Okay. Mm -hmm. But uh, here I said okay, let's say that I have only one hop. So this is why I need that. Any? All the start team, all the start team, yeah. One, one of the things they did, a little of the things they did different with this MIC metric, they didn't say I must multiply with my neighbors, <coughs> but the neighbors of the link. So it's a union around the link, so it's the neighbor ground on the other side that interferes with my link, because that's a no problem. The receiver must not be jammed to hear my final and my neighbors. And of course, I don't uh, have. Uh, must count, uh, I must not count the neighbors twice with both yeah. the same neighbor. So I cannot just add these two numbers. Yeah, but but, uh, and how, how does this metric uh, work in practice? I know there are, there are people who have done this. They pretend they have a, a working implementation. I'm not sure if it is a purely simulator one, but there are people who have already done something like this. The reason why we have not experimented it uh, in Polisa Org was that we have to change our packet format for it because we must integrate some information which link is on which collision domain, which are the same interface with are different interfaces, and that totally breaks the compatibility to the old TC packages and hello packages. So we would like to do this only once and not twice. Okay. And we will have a break like this in the near future. Okay. And how do, how other uh, port protocols are extendable with such things? So I'm really glad to raise this talk because tomorrow I'm going to give the talk with the experiment of the experimental branch of Babel, mm -hmm. which is called Babel Z in the honor of Zubaz. Some of you might know because he's the first person who explained this sort of things to me. And uh, Babel Z does pretty much what Hanning was describing, that is, it extends the packet format of Babel with information about frequencies with information about interference. And uh, I'm really hoping that we will be able to have a slightly larger scale test of this. And uh, I think we really hope to do some more and think about having a double end. <laughs> so yeah, so that's also a good question. If it, is it enough only to change matrix or should we also get uh, extensions to routing protocols. So here I, I said, okay, we don't change routing protocols, we just try to change matrix. Of course, if, if you cannot. Yeah. You need that for information. Yeah. 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 So, so, yeah. so here I mean it only for already existing information in OSR and other protocols. <coughs> but I know it's link qualities, and, and because I know link qualities, I also know how many neighbors I have. Okay. So this is what I limit myself. If I have more information, then of course, um, my probability calculus could be better, and I think this is wrong. As we saw before, so like, even better, <laughs> correct and better. Uh, yeah, so yeah, that's also the question how much information can you have, you know? So if you are um, link state or not, and so on, you know? So I don't know if how much is. Uh, but isn't this attempt misleading if, if the half two place neighbors you have are all passive? Uh, they just send their broadcasts and they don't, yeah. don't send Agree. any unicast yeah. traffic. This is big This is big approximation on, on how my, uh, on. So here below should be a uh, for probability of them sending me package. Okay? And this is uh, and I'm doing this with approximation of that uh, this is similar to international inequality, which of course is quite big with approximation. Okay? It, it, it was more, more why I did this is because I didn't want to have the ones here. Okay. In the first, I thought it was one, so number of uh, neighbors, but this is too hard, too huge. In fact, because we already still saw that some of them, those are not uh, uh, active and so on. So I wanted to make it smaller by uh, taking some um, other measurement, which is from one to zero. Uh, but yeah, sure, it would be even better if we would have uh, if 
information. But this is again, uh, this is all things what we are seeing as uh, uh, minuses are that exactly this. If our routing protocols would be able to say, aha, okay, I will decide this, but let's see what other nodes will decide currently, and then take this into account. Okay? So take it. So do like two iterations through, okay? So in one iteration you do small internal simulation of how everything will dumbly decide and then say, okay, if we know how to then decide, we can maybe say, okay, if everybody's going to one node, then we, let's split and so on. Okay, and this is exactly this. If I can see that one will send all traffic somewhere else and not to me, then I can assume that uh, uh, it will be less interference from that. I have a word of caution. Uh, the lesson that, that I have learned that probably others too is um, the protocol works much better if it works with the least amount of information that you need to communicate. So if you if you try to be aware of everything and uh, the amount of data you have to collect is getting more and more complex, then you then you have new problems because you will. Uh, have problems communicating all those data. If that is not accurate, you will have new problems. Yeah. That's why again, why I try to really do deal with information I already have in current. And of course, this is because of this there are huge approximations still. But I believe and hope that it would be better for a mixed network than it is. After all, it's just up to experiments. Oh, I know, I know. Know. But I want to first uh, hear a little bit theory from your experience because. I, I, don't have I would add, um, if you put into the equation the amount of half duplex neighbors that are active. But how do I know that they are active? You monitor the wireless channel? Yeah, so this, uh, depending, uh, making routing maybe depending directly on the traffic and node output sounds like a very good way to induce huge <coughs> amount of oscillation. Because I don't, either you have a traffic model, you can say, okay, I know this node will produce traffic, or you say, okay, at the moment it's producing traffic, maybe, but maybe in five seconds not. So using the, this interference information could be very useful because this information is static. We don't have, we don't have, we don't, have, we don't cannot really measure it wrong on which wireless wireless line frequency is interface is running because. Most of these interfaces are running on one frequency, you never change it again. So this is information we could, I think, pretty easy to integrate into, uh, uh, into the calculation without getting more problems collecting data. I'm, I'm still more worried about more basic problems like actually knowing how much throughput do I have for each link. That's, that's worrying me much more, much more. For, for ETX, a uh, 1 megabit link with no packet loss looks exactly the same like a 10 gigabit link, link with no packet loss. And there is a huge difference between a 1 megabit wireless link and a 54 megabit wireless link. So if there, and that's, that's a thing which is still not solved in my, in my opinion. Either you start sending unicast traffic just to measure, but then you're spoiling the bandwidth on the channel because you spoil it with, with data. It's actually not used. Or, you only measure when you have the data, and uh, then you do some fuzzy guessing if there is no payload on it. What about for me? That's more interesting. What, what about if you're taking a maximum of throughput of the last five minutes? This is quite static. Mm -hmm. How do you measure links that didn't have traffic in the last five minutes? Yes, it, they, they don't. They have zero. Yes, the problem is with zero, <laughs> and you, you will never, never send traffic over this link, so you will never get a measurement. Yeah, you create some traffic. That's what we. That's uh, for most uh, ETT. ETT is estimated travel time. ETX times or divided by the available link speed. So to measure how long does it does take to get information through, including retransmissions and link speed. One of the problems with this is you most likely need unicast probing computers on all links that don't have traffic in the measurement uh, period. Not necessarily. You could do something like. Uh, you send your broadcast at different data rates and you rate them whether you get those at higher data rates but of course 
this is also a new endeavor going into uncertainty because it can happen that because the broadcast is much shorter because it comes in higher data rate, it has a higher probability. So all kinds of new interesting effects can occur. Also, to accept the driver to actually allow that across the world. There's no API to allow you to control exactly. how you send the broadcast exactly. from it. But there are some drivers that can do it and some, some can't. And uh, when we decided to integrate ETX and OLSR, it seemed to be a good idea, and actually it was a good idea at the time, because it was generic. Now it works with any driver. You have to broadcast, and you can't broadcast. Of course, if you can do something fancy, like uh, reading information from the driver that has recently sent unicast traffic, but on the other hand, then you have the problem. Only because you have traffic, you know, and for all the others that you don't have traffic, you don't know, and then you blindly assume, Oh, okay, yeah. the, the others are worth nothing. No, no, no. no. So what I'm doing, trying to do with this is exactly get around this. Because here I take probability and I believe that then I can add extra clauses for bend and so on. So what means this is that if, 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 when I don't have information about something, I can take average probability or I can just take this last inference. It would be worse, uh, less optimal, Less than optimal, a solution, even more. <laughs> but it will be, uh, it will not, uh, it will degrade gracefully in the sense. That's the idea. So if, if you have information, you can improve your probability model. If you don't have information, then it's just worse approximation. But what are you assuming for those things that you don't have any information? This is it. You, there, that's a different phase. Uh, average, or you assume. Uh, uh, Maximum in the past, or you assume uh, that they, they, they don't influence in any way probability and so on. So there are different ways of how this is in the machine learning. It means how to deal with missing data or wrong data, and there are uh, ways of uh, statistical um, approximation of that missing data. So the problem, the problem is you need a key for for values you don't know. When you have a bandwidth and you want to influence your link cost or the total link quality with the bandwidth. If you don't need, don't know it. You have to put a default. When you put, default, for the next when you put your default too high, then you have a problem that links where you don't know things will be too good. When you put it too low, then you might concentrate too much on links you know something. So this is pretty difficult. Yeah, but, but you have, yeah. to, uh, have to choose the default well, <laughs> or you, you, you can complicate and vary it to time, and then see which what the better is on. So you 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 vary lower and then uh, routing gets through the door and you see oh, okay that's bad okay let's go back or oh, oh, it is good and so on so you can also do this but yeah sure but you can we cannot do much here it is I would I would like to warn you very much against um, mixing up the data plane and the control plane what you are suggesting uh, to uh, summarize is sending data in order to get information for the routing protocol. And I think that's very dangerous, and that's going to yield extremely complex implementations that are not easy to understand. So I want to really... We're already doing this with ETX. We're sending data called broadcast, but and count how much <coughs> we are getting true. So we are not sending, we are sending, we are sending... We are sending uh, yes, that's data. Right, uh, right enough, but you are not actually sending massive amounts of data that are going to... Nobody sends a success something called massive amounts. If you send one unicast per second over each link that has no unicast traffic, it might be enough to estimate the link state. I think this will become even more important with my own technology. Because with my own, if we focus on a certain period with my own technology. Because with the technology, you really focus on a certain period. And uh, yeah, the broadcast is, well, I don't know if it's any use because this is uh, it's a completely different modulation for me. Because they talk to the or broadcast. And I think it's even less. Okay, so what you're saying is that it is just using multiple unicasts instead of a broadcast, but other than that. Yes. Yeah. 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 And, and, you, and you can get more information. Yeah, yeah. You, you can get the bandwidth and that are packet loss. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I will show you around this. I was just one. The last question is do you know uh, any existing community 
open source implementation of some uh, routing protocols which would behave on our mixed network uh, better than ours are. And it suggests. You're, you're just trying to propose. <laughs> <laughs> this is the last question. No, no but, but really, from your from your, your routing protocol, so I know better how it works with mixing. So how is solved? How is solving currently if I have fiber and wireless? I actually I never tried on fiber. Okay, internet. Uh, sorry. Yeah. Um, well, Batman is solely based on packet loss. So as soon as it detects packet loss, it will um, prefer or not prefer the link. And over fiber, you won't have packet loss. Yeah, we have but, no but, special detection for fiber. But what about uh, hops? So if I have three hops of fiber and one hop of wireless. It depends on the packet loss on the wireless. Okay, so if it is, if the if you have no packet loss on wireless, it will be treated equally. Yeah. So it will take one megabit wireless link over one terabit free hop fiber link if none of them has packet loss. Well, the same method to detect whether we have a wired link would be an improvement. Yeah. Okay, but currently there is nothing. Okay, and all of them also have that special metrics with special value for internet, but that's it. There are people having used all of things like ETT, which <coughs> estimates the link bandwidth. And I think there's, there's an implementation trying to do this in a, in a source code repository, but there, there are not, we, have not, we have not really integrated it because of the problem with the packet format. And it's very difficult to get people to test the new packet format and because every time they have to refresh all the devices with a new version and they're incompatible. So it's difficult to move towards such a matrix. That's why we have delayed uh, the, the testing of other metrics up to the point where we move to OLS version 2 because we will have not a metric uh, specific uh, packet format anymore. Okay. We'll just have a large dimension value, so it's easier to change the yeah. Babel? Well, Babel has an extensive. Babel has, has been designed later than the star, and I knew about the problem they were having with the packet format, so the packet format in Babel is extensible. Okay, but currently there is some implementation which will... There is an implementation that takes in, uh, intra-root uh, uh, interference into account. Intra-root not done yet, but all of those <coughs> is something we should discuss. And the two versions will interoperate. So you don't have those problems, you can do both versions on the same network. And what will happen in the network is anyone's guess, but they do okay. interoperate. Now, to be okay. precise, the Z node will avoid the standard double nodes and try to follow the Z nodes only, and if they fail, they will go through the double nodes through the standard. Yeah, and then uh, different between Ethernet cable and uh, wireless? That's dealt with by knowing that the, that the uh, wired cable uh, doesn't, that the wired link doesn't interfere with anyone. Mm -hmm. So that sort of automatically yields you the right properties for wireless. Okay, so the same thing. Yes, yeah. you have to the full duplex. That is in case of intro routes, of interfering between two routes yeah. that happen can ruin it, but there are still two distinct routes, and that's something I haven't started working on. Okay. Uh, I, I, I want to mention the uh, CMDs. Yeah. There are two versions. The old goes pretty much as Lambert explained. And this new version, you mm have -hmm. ways to configure your metric. And um, one approach I commonly like is it's something like ETX. But um, if you assume, if you consider ETT, but you assume the uh, uh, the same maximum bandwidth for all links, then ETT is transforms to an ETX because it's a constant which is added with every link. Mm -hmm. And if you have packet loss, if you say every second packet is lost, then of course your bandwidth halves. And uh, what I'm doing in BMX6 is uh, I assume specific bandwidth, maximum bandwidth for wired links and for wireless things. And then I um, multiply it with a packet loss, which is an assumption, just to have an idea what could be the result. And, but then it adds up like ETX or ETT would be. 
you have an expected transmit time for the whole pass. If it's traveling by a uh, wired link, the expected transmit time does only marginally increase because you usually don't have effect loss, so it increases very quickly. Okay. And if you have a wireless link, first your assumption about the maximum bandwidth is lower, so alone based on this you have uh, the expected transmit time increases more. And if you have packed loss, it increases even more. Yeah. So it, uh, it does not consider different channels or stuff like this, but it considers the bandwidth for, yeah. or let's say, a theoretical, it makes an assumption about it. So, it so yeah, so I, you, you believe that uh, we should consider also this quite a lot uh, in the future for our, because we don't have any more just wireless networks. So I think it, it, it shows to be that um, multi protocols are not really ready for that yet. And just. But it's better. But it's better. <laughs> no, so yeah, I think we should do more work with that because we will have more. Uh, okay, thank you for your information and your input. Um, if anybody wants to implement this in his multi protocol, uh, we can discuss uh, awards and similar things. Um, we can also test, it. we will probably uh, do some upgrade of the protocol in our mesh, so we are choosing now different things. So if somebody wants to test uh, and uh, prove me something about the routing protocol, about how we solve our problem, we can deploy it there and he will be able to test uh, it there, these new things. Um, so yeah, we are currently quite happy. Easily. Most, most uh, likely, the whole, like, the whole mesh. So. Mm -hmm. Most likely, we could have at least this neighborhood um, influence on the ETX within a few hours before the start. Just writing a new uh, link quality plugin. It would be incompatible with the old one, but as long as the new one, it should be fine. Okay. Great, that's good. So, yeah, thank you. Oh, okay. But uh, what about Babel? How are you doing this in your route? You said hmm? about how uh, uh, yeah. and about inter route um, interference uh, timeline. <laughs> sure. I mean, uh, doing counting the number of neighbors is something is a, is a natural idea. Now the main problem is that if you look at the topology, you can put you once. Ah, by the time. Maybe we are already over time, time. Okay. and uh, before we dive into a new discussion, yeah. just make a okay. final break here. This okay. discussion could go on for a longer time. Yeah. That's why I'm, you okay. know. But I think you agree that it's important and I hope that we can do it later on. Some I think this the discussion is open and yeah. you can. Yeah. Okay, so thank you for listening and I hope I that told you something to you.